Hello everyone, my name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. How you guys doing? And today right, we're so about to find out if you can mix batteries together. Do you think that's possible? If you have a gel battery, can you mix it with an open flooded lead acid battery? If you have an AGM battery, can you combine it with a lithium ion phosphate battery? What about combining batteries with different voltages? Like if you have a six volt battery, can you combine it with a 12 volt battery? Now, can you also combine batteries of different amperages? And if you have two batteries here, one is 300 amps and one is 200 amps, can you combine them together? Now, what about batteries of the same kind, but different ages? So if you wanna find out if you can combine these batteries, you definitely have to stick around because I will be right here. Hi guys, you're welcome. My name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. If you haven't subscribed, hey, we're missing you, man. We need you to be part of this community, all right? So from today, henceforth, nobody's ever gonna tell you about what's going on in the solar community. And of course, all the latest technologies, all the updates, do not let this pass you by. Be part of this because the moment you subscribe, you're going to be the very first to be notified as soon as we have fresh and brand new videos. Stick around. We appreciate you. You're welcome. So can you combine batteries of different makes? AGM, gel batteries, lithium batteries. Can you combine all of them together? The answer is no. And you want to find out because sometimes it can be very annoying, right? So let's take for instance that you have four batteries and you're trying to make up a 48 volt system. So each of the batteries are 12 volts. And of course, if you connect them in series, it becomes a bank of 48 volts that you need to power up your system. Now, two years down the line, one of the batteries fail, leaving you with three. Your inverter is going to start complaining because the inverter is not going to like it. Okay, so the inverter wants uh, the voltage goes below the threshold of 48 volts. It's going to shut it down. So you're having a very big problem. So most of the time at night, your inverter goes off. So if you have this kind of situation, the very next rational line of thinking will definitely uh, be to go and get um, a gel battery, even if it's not the same brand, uh, get a gel battery from somewhere and make up uh, this bank and you begin to use it. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? As long as it's a gel battery. Now, here's the thing. Even though it's the same gel battery, but it's from a different manufacturer, you need to understand the fact that batteries have different chemical compositions, all right? So if they have different make, different chemical compositions in terms of producing these batteries, they will definitely react differently to charges. All right, so what that means is that even if these two batteries were to be gel batteries, but from different brands, so let's say brand A gel battery and brand B gel battery, they will all react differently because they all have different chemical composition. So what that means is that one might fill up a lot faster depending on what the chemical composition is. Some batteries charge a lot faster. So once this is fully charged, there will be a lot of pressure on the one that is fully charged. This one is struggling to get filled up, but this one is already filled up. So if you were to combine these two batteries together, this is a gel battery and this is an open flooded lead acid battery. So if you had to combine both of them together, what is going to happen is that the open flooded lead acid battery is going to take longer time to charge while the gel battery is going to fill up a lot faster. So the, the charging situation you're going to have here is that the gel battery will fill up a lot faster while the open flooded lead acid battery will be lagging behind. And now when the gel battery fills up, there's going to be a whole lot of pressure on the gel battery because it's already filled up and this guy is yet to fill up all right so this will continue to charge and charge and charge while this is not full yet so what is going to happen is that there's a tendency that you might overcharge the gel battery because the gel battery fills up a lot faster than the open for the lead acid battery so if you have the two of them in a bank or if you have them connected together in a bank and it's supplying your power needs through your inverter, um, if you continue to do this over time, this battery is going to fail because you're overcharging this battery and you're undercharging this battery. Both of them, in fact, might fail. All right, so that's why they say you shouldn't combine batteries of different kinds in one bank. This is going to be overcharged and this will be undercharged. 
all right so you're charging this so much and you're on the charging this so you're killing both batteries so the cells so of this battery is going to wear off a lot quicker um the gels that you have inside of the battery is going to dry up and the plates will be exposed and the battery will not attain its full potential as regards its lifespan so the open flooded lead acid is also going to have a problem it's not being charged fully all right and if that continues over time the battery will sulfate so you see that you're doing the two batteries a disservice by having the both of them in the same bank all right so this is going to be overcharged this will be on the charge so always make sure that in your battery bank that it's the same battery the same voltage the same amperage the same age do not try to do variants in your battery combinations all right so um your gel battery should be connected to your gel battery it is going to be the same make it's going to be the same age it's going to be the same voltage it's going to be the same amperage because sometimes you might say as long as the both of them are gel batteries i can combine them together as long as the both of them are the same voltage the same amperage and the same gel battery but you might have a problem because these batteries have different resting voltages there might be a little little variance and what happens at that particular point in time is that the more powerful battery would attempt to charge the weaker battery and that happens most times when you have when you connect batteries of different voltages so if you were to connect a 6 volt battery to a 12 volt battery um the 12 volt battery definitely will try to charge the 6 volt battery so if and you're using a tubular battery it is going to be tubular battery in the entire bank if you're using a gel battery it's going to be a gel battery in the entire bank if you try to combine them together the batteries will wear off a lot quicker the beauties of having a uniform battery in your battery bank is that the batteries will get to charge at the same rate and discharge at the same rate okay none is discharging more than the other one and none is charging more than the other one so if you have a uniform battery and you have the same battery in your battery bank the batteries will last a lot longer all right so i did a test for myself so what i did was to combine two uh, different types of open flooded lead acid battery in the same bank to see for myself if they could all charge at the same time and discharge at the same time so if you have the same battery in a bank both of them are supposed to be charging at the same rate and discharging at the same rate and i need you guys to see this come on let's go check it out all right guys so this is uh, essentially what i did here as you can see i try to put all these batteries together okay so in the midst of all these batteries i put in opz batteries uh, together with rosarite batteries they are all six volts battery okay and um, the opz batteries are less amperage uh, than the rosarite the rosarite is over 400 amp and the opz is 375 amps so i put all of them together it's different make uh, from different um, battery producers so I wanted to see how it was going to function in the midst of all these batteries so this is what we are saying you should never do mixing two batteries together so I had to put all of this together to see how the charging is going to be so what I noticed is that because the um, OPZ battery is a less amperage it fills up faster um, so if you look at it all right so I've been able to zoom in you can see that um, the OPZ battery is bubbling, right? So you can see that the OPZ battery is bubbling. It's already uh, fully charged. But let's see what's happening with the regular, with the um, Rosarit battery. So if you can see the inside of the uh, Rosarit battery is quite calm. Nothing is going on you know because it's not fully charged it's still getting charged but meanwhile the opz battery is already fully charged okay so just a little bit of some uh, chemical reactions here but it's quite calm as compared to uh, the opz battery that is already bubbling and all of that all right everybody that's the very much we can take today if you haven't subscribed now would be a good time to subscribe all right because we need you right here to become part of the solar technology community all right don't forget to share don't forget to comment and do not forget to like thank you so much guys and see you in the next video